about what's going to unfold on January 6th uh, when the electoral college votes are certified. It's typically pro forma, but we've heard uh, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell told me earlier this morning they expect as many as 70 of your colleagues to go down to the House floor and make speeches about the election uh, results and whether they should be overturned. Uh, we have the president urging people to go out into the streets. What do you expect uh, from your colleagues in terms of this effort? And what would you urge them to do uh, in the face of, uh, you know, David Ignatius was on with us earlier warning that this is a really dangerous period uh, it, to, for us to be in, both here at home and also in terms of how we interact with our foreign adversaries? Well, well first, uh, I, I start with you know, reminding members uh, that we are members of Congress. And we uphold the Constitution. And as a proud Republican and as a proud conservative, uh, I look to the Constitution to guide us through this. And it's given us uh, great comfort over the last 200 plus years of how we do uh, the transition of power uh, in America and be the example to the world. Uh, that being said, I also recognize that you remember a lot of the folks on your show this morning have talked about President Trump. But what, they, what they've been missing are the millions of Americans that are behind President Trump that do truly believe that this election was, uh, was fraudulently taken uh, from the president. I have no doubt that Trump supporters believe the election was stolen because that's what Trump told them. The total election fraud. But that doesn't make it true any more than Hillary has a pedophile pizza oven where she drinks toddler blood while deleting emails. Russia, if you're listening, the 30,000 emails. To recap, on January the 6th, Congress certifies the vote of the Electoral College. And that's it. Truth is, certification isn't even in the Constitution. Once the electors voted, Biden won. But Trump supporters have been repeatedly lied to for so long, they actually believe there were midnight ballot dumps and Dominion machines changing their votes. And now they're being called on to fight. Punch him in the face. Trump is encouraging unrest in D.C. next week with his Twitter missives full of hate and lies, directing the Proud Boys and other racist mafia to travel to Washington and cause mayhem. But that's not even the real problem. I've actually instructed my people to look into it. No, the real problem is members of Congress who so fear Trump's base, they're willing to be cowed by his ignorant ramblings. Trump has told no. them that over and over and over and over again, and that's what they see on social media. I mean, that's where that message that is, is coming complete, from. That's a complete disrespect for the wisdom of those American people. Those really? They figured all this on their own? I love the poorly educated. Trump supporters wouldn't know the Federalist Papers from the right-wing nuts on TikTok. My grandpa did die, but that was because he was a liberal. He was a stupid liberal. Trump's dangerous posse, like Senate Republican Ted Cruz, pretend to honor American values, all the while dipping their toes into anarchy and chaos. They are the architects of the last four years of this great American decline and continue to sow the seeds of distrust that have led to the deaths of more than 300,000 Americans. I wanted to always play it down. Trump is a desperate sociopath who is so psychologically unbalanced, he might not be capable of any honorable thought. He's headed for financial ruin and possible imprisonment. But what about the Republican Party? What is their fate? They used to be the party of Lincoln, but now they're the party on the way to Ford's theater. Goddamn right. Hydrochloric Sound like yo-yos. Yeah, and uh, do something crazy to it. Screw you. Vote You're in a lot of trouble, Don. I'll make you a promise. To rig the election. Oops. Winning. Yes! <laughs>